get out. And welcome to Eglin Air Force Base. This whole place is full of fighters and firepower. Behind me is the F-15, famous aircraft, and in front of me is the famous pygmy rattlesnake. On this adventure, I'm gonna take you across England Air Force Base looking at some other hard-hitting venomous species like this little pygmy rattler. Ooh, you're a little bit naughty. Come on, mate, you better come off the flight path, I think. Come on, little fella. Come on now. Base is a huge tract of land which also contains the Army Ranger Base. Terry and I have been invited to participate in one of the most interesting conservation programs I've ever heard of. The Air Force owns such a huge amount of land that their conservation work is very important with these endangered species. Yeah, how, how, how you doing? How you doing? Great. Hi. Hi. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I'm Sergeant Terry? Maddie, and this is Sergeant Krause. Uh -huh. Welcome to the United States Army Reptile Facility, or we like to call it the Snake House. All right. Woo! So come right. on in. Thanks. All right. Follow us on in. Right here. This is the United States Army Rangers Training Camp. To become a ranger, you've got to go through this camp. And as a part of the education of the trainee rangers, they've got to go through the understanding of reptiles. And this is Big John. He's the mascot. We're going to hose around you, Big John. Isn't he a beauty? Have a look at that for a head. He loves having his water cleaned out. He enjoys the feeling of the water pressure on his body. And he shares his house with all his mates. They're used as part of the education. Alligators are quite common here on the base, and the trainee rangers will probably encounter them when they're out in the field doing their mission. The top jaw rope off. Right. You see, we don't even have to jump him with this top jaw rope technique. It's, it's like... It's very uh, alligator friendly. We definitely do almost the same thing, only we've been putting it around where his jaws are, almost like that's the one I'm like. Right around course. his neck, right? Uh huh. So, we're, but we'd like to try this new uh, top jaw technique for us, and, and yeah. just so that we can utilize it for future operations. Okay, great. This is going to be a giant learning curve for myself and Terry, and for the Rangers. I'm going to teach them a few techniques that I've utilized with the alligators, and they're going to show me a few techniques for training army rangers. All I've got to do is just slip it over his top jaw, mesh it round the teeth, that's it, go, go, we've hooked go, up. Go, go, go. A little bit more excitement, that's the way it usually goes through one. Is, is it? that good? No, no that's good, okay. that's great. So you just go straight out right now. Fast. All we've got to do is get him up out of the pond and onto dry land, and then we'll just physically restrain him. Check out those teeth. Get roll. He's got to be shifted from one pond to another, which is the perfect time to show the rangers a tip or two. Down. All right. Now, what you'll notice is by, with this top jaw rope, you'll have a lot more control over the crocodile. The trick is the to be yeah. very yeah. gentle and use off. finesse. Are you happy for him to go in there now? Yeah. Yeah. I'll hold his tail. Okay. So it's a simple job. Unhooking it, there he is, he's free. It's these Army Rangers' job to take the student rangers into the field, in amongst reptiles that have the capacity to deliver a fatal bite. Yeah, safety and speed. Yeah, more control over. The bigger the animal, the better it works. To get an overall picture of Eglin Air Force Base, we get up into the air. And we have a look at some of the objectives that we're going to have to go down into where the young rangers are going and remove highly venomous snakes.
He doesn't like my presence. Wow, did you see that? Burrowing owls. I've never seen a burrowing owl before. Now, they'll forage during the day, coming on to dark and, of course, through the night. And they're virtually a silent a silent bird as they fly, and that enables them to get up on their prey really easily. They're like a stealth fighter. They've evolved excellent fuselage and wings, which enables them to fly without sound. Aren't they neat? And they can run along the ground pretty quick, too. This is great. Let's check out his burrow. You can see these crosses, these low perches, they've been erected by the Jackson Guard so as the owls can sit up here and they can scan across the plains looking for predators like coyotes. And they build quite a great burrow. They use their little feet and flick, 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 flick out all the sand up onto the mound. Oh, here we go. And this is what they've been eating. These bones here, I'd say, come from a small rodent like a mouse. And here's grasshopper. There's all sorts of bits of insects. There's a part of a beetle. Have a look down in here. This is their burrows, this is their retreat. And so it's very important that they get a perch and spot for coyotes because they're very vulnerable to attack. If the old smart coyote comes along and can get out in front of this burrow quick enough, there's no escape and they could dig down, whack, get a meal out of them. Beautiful animal. I've never seen a burrowing owl before. This is the only supersonic range east of the Mississippi. So if it wasn't for the armed forces, we wouldn't have burrowing owls. They're pretty specific with their knees, and so this big, clear, open paddock has created the best habitat for them. Back at Eglin's flight line, I'm going to take a look at an aircraft that is critical to the Army Ranger's conflict on the ground. Easy to see why the Army and the Rangers just love these. It's all designed around that gun. Have a look at them. They're designed to be able to handle, take a bit of firepower, a few bullets. That's nothing to these jiggers, mate. You can see the engine sitting on top there, and they're super manoeuvrable, able to get around, able to go down low, and they'll keep in communication with the ground. And the delivery, like, look at this. Look, look, look. They're just spitting a few of these rockets out. They can put sidewinders. They love their sidewinders, of course, protecting themselves from other airplanes. Wow, they are some big bullets, biggest bullets I've ever seen. And this whole plane is designed around this 30 millimeter Gatling gun, designed to kill tanks. This is it, and very impressive. It's even got rifling in it, and they come out at a fair rate of knots. And you're looking at around about 60 to 70 bullets pew, 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 per second, and it only takes about 30 to kill a tank. <whistles> See this back here? OK, it's all designed for manoeuvrability, getting around, you know, ground support and all that. They can take a hit. This thing, boom, blow 
blow that up, that can come off. No drama at all. In fact, in the Gulf War, they've lost a third of a wing. The old warthog, mate. No problem. Well, we can carry on the mission. I'm missing bits and pieces. Enemy fire a few bullets. Doesn't hurt this thing. Keeps going. Bulletproof. Ooh. The warthog. I love him. Even the cockpit is bulletproof. This whole cockpit area is surrounded by a titanium shell. So big heavy-duty bullets can hit this. No problem for the pilot, mate. Ooh, in he goes. The four-wheel drive vehicles the military use are called Humvees, and they can go just about anywhere. The trainee rangers are scheduled to parachute in and go through the objectives. Before they even get there, we're out ahead of them removing the venomous snakes. You know, the um, air conditioning doesn't work real well in here. Here's our first objective, and this is a hot spot for snakes. So this is it. This is where we're gonna uh, go out, scan the area for rattlesnakes and other venomous species, because this is right where the students are coming. This is objective alligator. This is it. This is objective alligator. As you can see over here, we've got some bunkers. Yeah. Far one over there, and some small hooches here. So you get snakes here? Snakes all the time, especially on this one, because we've got a water source right down there, close, oh, to, yeah, close yeah. to the objective. Yeah. Plenty of cool areas. Lots of saw palm or palmettos in yep. here where they like to hang it out in. So this is a likely location. The ranger's training course is very hardcore. It has to be. You've got to be tough to be a ranger. And so they're very concentrated on doing their mission. Well, you want to split up? I'll go this way. There's a good likelihood that they'll be fatigued and pushing hard to get through the mission and not that wary about venomous species. There's a whole series of species that are attracted to the water, particularly pygmy rats. Here we go, here. And here's a little ripper. Have a look at this little beauty. Come on, little fella. Woo! What a little beauty. Gorgeous little pygmy rattler. And you can see that beautiful orange tinge he's got there. Here's a stick you can get right on. That's a good stick for a little snake. Very quiet. I take great pride in never having been bitten and envenomated by a venomous species of snake. And I wouldn't want to get bitten by a rattler, particularly one of these, because the bite is painful. Apparently it's really painful, and uh, it affects the blood system, and you're going to get tissue damage. Whew. In fact, I've heard some pretty ugly stories where fingers have, have, to be, have had to be uh, amputated. They're a gorgeous species, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. So, I'll just um, get him into a bag. Quick, quick. Come on, mate, you're all right, you're all right. I find calico bags the best way to transport venomous snakes. Yeah, all right. Just get him up the box. I've got one. Rattlers have got big fangs and they can penetrate through the bags and so we put them into a wooden box for extra security. Oh, he's a big guy. I'll leave it up to you guys. Yeah, he's a very big guy. Good of him. There you go, little buddy. He's got a nice, strong guy. All right. He's a full-grown adult. Uh -huh. One of the students wouldn't want to step on him coming through. Yeah, too right. So that you consider as a large one? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, let's get some more. Very large. <laughs> Great. Okay. Pygmy rattlesnakes are really common in this area. And once you work out their coloration and how cryptic they are, you see them everywhere. Here's one in a foxhole. Yeah, just and a it's tiny. Just a small one. Where? Right here. Oh. Look how small he is. What a little snapper. Buddy. Right, this is a pygmy rattler baby. <laughs> Look how tiny it is. And as I've been told, he would be big enough to uh, envenomate me, have fangs long enough to penetrate my skin and deliver 
A pretty powerful bite. In fact, a small person, if it got bitten by this, it could get very complicated. What a little champion. I have never seen a venomous snake so small. Really cute. I better move while the going's good. Although this is interesting, isn't it? He's on one giant heat source. And provided I don't move, he shouldn't tag me. Although this is a huge risk and no one should ever attempt this. And if he bit me, it would be my mistake. I understand the danger doing this, and I'm trying to be very careful, and he's curling up into a position where he feels a little more defended. Hey, Mark, oh, yeah. the honour is all yours, mate. Oh, okay, you great, found him. Steve. We've got these standing rules in Australia. If you found him, it's your snake. Great, Steve. So the honour's all yours. What and a beautiful all... little animal. You're and I gently tip it into the ranger's hands. As long as he doesn't grab at it, it shouldn't strike and bite. Piggy rattlers have got long fangs and it would be capable of inflicting a nasty injury. But we've decided that it's too small to pose a threat to the trainee rangers. So we release it next to a tree. It's a gorgeous little animal. And we're more inclined to get the adults which pose a fatal or serious injury type threat. This one's just too small. Oh. Looks like a little rattlesnake, maybe a pygmy rattler. Are you a little rattlesnake? You're very flat. What are you doing? Hello. No, he's not rattling. Oh, look at his little nose. This, <laughs> this is an eastern hognose snake. And he's pretending to be a rattlesnake so that he's safe. He's got the same coloration as a pygmy rattler. Whoop, he's gonna bite. And on the end of his tail, <laughs> he doesn't have any rattles, but he coils up just like a rattlesnake to try to fool me. Look how flat he is. He's got that little turned up nose. His tongue's going. Come here, buddy. There you go. Isn't he pretty? Now, I'm not in any danger, because, of course, the hognose snake is not venomous at all. Hey, sweetie. Now he's settling down a little bit. See how his neck is relaxed? Now he doesn't look so intimidating because he's calm now. He knows I'm not going to hurt him. They love this nice, sandy ground back in the pine trees, so I'll let him go on his way. Here you go, bud. The eastern hognose snake is one species that we definitely won't have to remove from the objective. Oh, 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 look at the way he's opening up his mouth. And if you have a look back there, see how he's wiggling his tail? He's trying to mimic a rattlesnake. Ooh, you've got your mouth open. And this is a black race. Oh, he's a colubrid, which means he's got no fangs nor any venom. They overpower their food. See his tail wiggling there? And they're quick. They are like grease lightning. Come on, mate. There's a good snake. Yep. Hey, oh, hey, 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 hey. Settle down. I'm in no danger at all. The black racer is completely harmless. And they're pretty quick to get out of your way. It's only when you confront them, when, you, when they think they're in danger of being killed or eaten, that they'll strike. And they're a beautiful snake. You can see that dark coloration on top and underneath their bottom there see that under there it's white they're one of the fastest snakes that i've come across they're able to catch their food so quick that the poor old lizard doesn't even know what's hit it oh oh, oh he's gonna bite me on the face and that's another thing with these black races they seem to target your face whack straight into it which is a great way to avoid predators and they can climb trees really well, too. There you go, mate. Nice snake. And another harmless species that we won't have to temporarily remove. There's no danger from black races. Up you come. Come on, little lizard. Here you come. Wow, can they jump? Holy guacamole! And he jumps through this bush. Now I can't see you. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. There he is. Look at this. Up he come. There he is. Whoa! He's not even scared of me.
This beautiful little green gem is an adult. He's not at all worried about me. And he jumps through this foliage like it's going out of fashion. And this is saw palmetto, great scrub type. Look at this, the place crawls with animals. Here's a blue-tailed lizard. Look at him, just cruising around this pine tree. He's not scared either, look out, I could be a big predator. He's not worried, not at all. Great area, great reptile location. Eglin Air Force Base is rich with wildlife, particularly reptiles. Have a look at this one. It's a pine snake, and he's on the move. He sets me coming. He's tensed up. Crikey, he's angry, and it's obvious. Open and hissing like that. Come on now. Oh, you're gonna bite me. He means stay away or I'm gonna bite you. Oh, hey, hey, hey. You're all right. You're all right now. Come on now. Oh, you're gonna bite me. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know biting now. That is really intimidating. Whoa, you want to bite me? I know you do. <laughs> Just as well, this is a non-venomous species. Whoa, this is a pine snake. And they often get killed because they're easily confused with a big old eastern diamondback. Have a look at the blue coloration of the eyes. That is the cloudy phase. It's gonna shed its skin pretty soon. In the next week, those eyes will clear up and then it will shed its skin. So I'd say this snake is using the heat of the day to move into a location, perhaps back into its... back into its home, where it can shed its skin. It's been out here getting a little bit of sun. When I first came onto it, it could sense the vibration of my footsteps, and it goes... Stay away from me! Mouth open. I'm a snake and I might bite. Probably would have too, but it's settled down now. Settled down nicely. Totally uninclined to bite, and I can just let it gently cruise through my fingers, over my body. I hope it's not going to bite. No. Look at that. No problem at all. Ooh, it's emitting a very pungent odour, and that is a deterrent for predators. You know, I'm a stinky old thing. Don't touch me. I smell bad. Which is great, you know. I certainly wouldn't want to eat this snake after smelling that. Pine snake. They share the territory with the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Beautiful animal. Well, I'm gonna let you go on your way so you can shed your skin, little one, or big one. Here you go. There you go. What it lacks in venom, it sure makes up for with hissing and aggression. Rattlesnakes, being the more common of the venomous species here, cause the majority of serious bites. They've got heat-sensing pits, and when you get into the cooler months, they go for warmth to curl up during the cool of the night. Unfortunately for the trainee rangers, when they put their swags down for the night to camp, they feel the warmth coming off the rucksack and the swag, and they'll head for it. The ranger may roll over in their sleep and whack, take a hit even mid-body, which means a trip to the hospital for anti-venom. These bunkers are an excellent place for pygmy rattlesnakes, and you'll find them everywhere. Oh, here we go. Got one in there, Got one, mate. Woo, he's a little beauty, too. In he goes. Keep going. Keep going in. Okay. So you're pretty happy with today's catch? I think when we open this box, we're going to have quite a few pygmy rattles in Uh-huh. And you'll just release them over the other side yeah, of the range there somewhere? Right. Have a look at this one. 
Wow. Look at the colours on that. What a beautiful colour pattern. Is that is that like a standard colour for this uh, for this area or the, is it the unique? orange the orange and the grey it, it just varies. It's like come, someone's blonde or brunette. Really? Yeah. That's a beautiful coloration. Come on now, we'll just drop you in this box. Yeah, you can have the rattle. So that would be a good haul for today, or you'd, you'd no, often get more than that? That's about average what we get. Uh-huh. So we're heading out onto the river, looking for gators and water moccasins, or cottonmouth. The students are going to be travelling into this objective by GPS. We've already got it marked out, so we're going to go straight to where they've got to go through the swamp at night. I don't believe there's too much threat with alligators, so we won't have to remove any of them from the objective, but there is one species that hits hard and does bite a few people along the way, and that's the cottonmouth or water moccasin. I'm not too worried about alligators. The rangers, they've said to me that they very rarely encounter them and they've never had a threatening encounter. The one snake that they do come across quite frequently, and we're going to come across for sure, is the cottonmouth. They're pretty hard-hitting venomous pit vipers, and they've got a real good habit of hanging around the water. Come here, buddy. This is a yellow rat snake, no biting. Take it easy. They're not venomous, but like any snake, they've got teeth and they can bite. And he's got these beautiful round eyes because he's nocturnal. It's just coming on to dark, so he's starting to move around, hunting for something to eat. Like his name implies, he'll eat rats, other small mammals, sometimes even a little bird. One of his favorite foods is eggs. Some people call them the chicken snake because in civilization, he'll come around chicken coops, go in and raid the chicken nest right from under the chicken sometimes, eat the egg. Are you gonna give me a little bit of a bite? Tongue's going 90 miles an hour. He's trying to get a track on me. There'll be no biting, young man. So some people don't like him because he'll raid chicken coops. I reckon he's terrific. He's this beautiful yellow color, and he has a real job to do. He keeps all kinds of pest species, little, little rats and mice in check. Now, the rangers aren't going to have any trouble with him because he's not venomous. He'll be well out of their way, so we won't have to remove him from the objective. There you go, buddy. You go hang out and do your thing. Boy, he's a nice snake. Great tail for climbing. Didn't even bite. Isn't that amazing? So this is checkpoint two, and this is another objective. We're going in looking for water moccasins and gators. So, Ted, just stay nice and close. Yeah. OK, Steve, yeah. let's go this way. This is where we're going to clear the vein at. So what are they coming straight through here? Uh, they're coming right straight through here. So we're going to finish here and no moccasins. Everything takes on a whole different perspective when night falls. Although we've got lights because we have to remove venomous snakes from this area, the training rangers won't have any lights at all. They'll depend entirely on a luminous compass to find their way through. Come on, little kid. Right. This is a scarlet king snake. He is an arboreal species. He's got a good hold with his tail on this branch. There we are. And he's a coral snake mimic. Of course, the coral snake is the most venomous snake in the United States. And although he's got the same stripes and a similar pattern, there are some differences. He's got different layers of stripes so that it's red on black instead of red on yellow. And he doesn't have the same coloration on his head. Oh, he's a little bit nervous. Now, this is an adult, but even as an adult, he's not big enough to eat real big food items. So he'll eat things like small insects, maybe tiny mammals, and even other small snakes. And nothing's gonna bother him because he looks so much like the feared coral snake. Here you go, pal. We'll just put you back here. You can 
goes. A simple thing to remember is red on black, you're okay, Jack. Red on yellow kills a fella. He's a beautiful little toad. I think it's a little oak toad. The amphibians throughout this pristine swampland are quite thick, and they're an integral part of the environment. Amphibians are wildlife indicators. A high population of frogs means a nice, healthy ecosystem. Here we go. He's swimming, powering straight towards the cypress. They can go under the water or on top. The trick is to get them while they're on top. Because if they go under, you get yourself in a really dangerous situation. You'll never know if you're going to stand on them. I got him. Luckily, he goes into the cypress roots and I'm able to tail him. Yeah. I got a moccasin, mate. All right, all right. Got a bag? Yeah, I got a bag right here. It's an adult, quite colourful. So this is a water moccasin, and sometimes they're called the cottonmouth. And these guys hit pretty hard. They scare me a little. I'm quite intimidated by them. And they remember of the Echistrodon group. Whew, they got a wild looking head and they're quite common. It's really a bonus to get this bloke out of this objective. Now this is a good solid snake and they don't get much bigger than that up here. But you can see that head. But you can see that head, very similar to the copper head. And you can see he's got pits right on the end of his nose there, they're heat sensing pits. Okay, here we go. All right, bagged. Two good. Just got to be a little careful too, because they can bite straight through the bag. Like all the pit vipers, they got great big fangs. And the old water moccasin, he's got a fair whack of venom in there. This is really good to remove him out of this objective and get him away where he can't run into a conflict with people. Woo, yeah, all right. Do you know where Terry went? This whole ranger training camp is about education. He's going to consume it usually from the head down. Because everything in nature falls back. First aid techniques, how to avoid snakes, what to look for, venomous versus non-venomous. It's all very important information for a ranger to take into the bush. Accidents happen. And there's no telling when you might jump out of a plane and parachute straight onto a water moccasin. So you need an education to take with you. And so the war games begin. Everything is simulated as if it is actually happening in a wartime event. We're here as observers, but it's exciting to be able to participate to help these people to stay safe while carrying out their objective. Now everyone's shooting out of the planes and they'll parachute to the ground. Once they hit the ground, they've got to release from their chute and carry an incredibly heavy pack to run for the tree line as fast as possible. As they shoot through this field, they could be anywhere. And as they run through the grass, a lot of things are going through their mind, not just the possibility of enemy fire, but also the animals that may be around them. So the first guys are starting to run for cover? Right. These guys will pack up and they'll run for cover too. Yeah. Everyone's trained to keep their profile low once they hit the ground. And Eglin Air Force Base train their Army Rangers the best in the world. Just as well we got those snakes now. I think these students are really going to appreciate that fact. Morning, man. Ah. I'm Ranger Aaron. I'll be your PL for today. Uh, Alp team, stand up. Hello. Oh. All right, sit down. Uh, prepare to copy copious notes. Who are we fighting? We're this fighting particular objective is going to be from point A to B through the bush. They're going to have to learn to read maps, avoid the potential enemy, stay out of the way of venomous snakes, and keep low to the ground. These guys are going to have to move through bush they may have never seen before and rely heavily on their compass, their leaders, and their camouflage. 
In the wild, so many animals have this natural adaptation, but the army rangers have to add the camouflage. They put the stripes across their eyes like the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. They model a pattern across their hands so that they blend in with their environment. In the wild, camouflage is everything. If you can mimic your surroundings, you have a far greater chance of survival. They take this stuff really seriously, and for good reason. It was just the other day that a timber rattlesnake tagged one of the student rangers. He only got one fang in, but it was enough to envenomate and it took five vials of anti-venom to get him back on top of it. A couple of days in hospital, and he's okay. But this is why they take it so seriously. Removing snakes from the objective has been a very big highlight of my life. Myself and Terry have loved every minute of it. But it's important and significant. This is really serious stuff. Okay, now listen, mate, you want to stay away from the rangers because they're in hardcore training. Jump up there, buddy. Jump up there. There you go. Oh, crap. Oh, check this out. Check this out. This is no danger to the rangers whatsoever. It's a salamander. you got to be really... Careful handling these little amphibians because they've got a very slimy little body, which is very important to them. But have a look at him. Now, they're a completely harmless amphibian, and just like frogs, they're an environmental indicator. I'm getting left behind here. These aren't quite as dangerous as their big cousins, the alligators. I'll put him back in his rotten log. There you go, mate. Yoo-hoo! So getting up and down, laying lay down in the scrub, fire, all this leaf litter. They're move, getting in real close contact with all sorts of species. I saw a black racer bolt out there a minute ago. One of the rangers laid down on him, pew, he took off. Ranger never flinched an inch. Longleaf pines. <laughs> this is like yesterday. We saw more pygmy rattlesnakes here than you could poke a stick at. Uh, you could poke an M16 at. Here we go. Go again. Hey, have a look at this snake. Oh, you're got. And he's hissing at me. Have a look at him. He's in a cobra pose. Hey, did those rangers upset you? The rangers ran right past him. Now this. Although it looks like a wild snake, look at him flatten out. This is a hognose snake. The beautiful little hognose. Hey, that's a very typical um, posture for a, like a cobra, you know, flattening the neck out. Isn't he funny? And these are completely harmless. It's a harmless little hognose. I'd better get back on track. Now listen, mate. You stay right up close to this tree and watch out for the rangers because they're in a hurry. There you go. They're nearing their target, and they've got to blow it up. That's the mission. Bring it over here. This is going to be the spot we're going to blow it. Roger. Move out. 
One minute, Gio. One minute. Okay, bombs in place. Now we got to retreat. Mission accomplished and no snake bites. Okay, Dad, firstly, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much, Rangers. You did a real good job and uh, best of luck with your career. Oh! Oh! And one last thing. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Good luck. <laughs> Our time here on Eglin has been a real eye opener. I've got to see how war games can work in harmony with wildlife and the wilderness. I've taken great pride in working with the armed forces and I've had a far better education than I ever thought. Wildlife rules in this place and their consideration of their natural world is a great example for everyone. Conservation rules. some of my greatest boyhood dream with real gear. This place is just a hive of activity with some great species. Not just snakes, Steve's favorite. We've also wrangled everything from mares to woodpeckers and the Jackson Guard are doing a terrific job with their conservation efforts. Nice work. We'll see ya.